Hi, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be giving you my tips and tricks on how to successfully migrate from either the server to the cloud or to go from cloud to cloud. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing as it really, really does help out the channel. Drop a like if you get value to this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Jira. Now this process is going to work for either Confluence or for Jira. Just keep in mind that Atlassian does call their migration assistant tools a little bit differently, but they're basically the exact same thing. So you're going to want to click on that gear, go to system. And once you're here, you're going to want to scroll all the way down here on the left. And we're looking for migrate to cloud side. Now this is a beta thing. And so your mileage is going to vary, but I've probably done maybe half a dozen migrations and I haven't had any issues. Now there is a checklist. There's a bunch of stuff that you have to check here and you want to make sure you follow these steps. But let me give you the most important things up front. Number one, you must be an org admin in the source and in the destination. This really mainly applies to cloud to cloud, but from data center or server to the cloud, you want to make sure that in the destination site, you are an org admin because if you're not that destination site is not going to show up in your migration plan. So you, this is the first critical thing that you must do. Number two, and this is really more of a CYA than anything else. But number two is you're going to want to make sure that the plugins that you have in the data center or in your source cloud also exist in the destination. Now, this is probably where you run into your biggest problem, because if you're on the data center or on-premise version, I'm just going to call it on-premise from this point forward. If you're on the on-premise version, those plugins may not always exist in the cloud. So you want to basically mitigate that. So you can either decide to migrate without that data or you wait until that vendor creates the plugin in both environments. Fortunately, because Atlassian has been pushing so heavily to get out of on-premise and into the cloud, a lot of vendors are creating their applications in the cloud. And so this is becoming less and less of a problem. The next thing is you want to check your permission settings, especially when you're doing a migration for Confluence, you cannot have any allow all anonymous access to come through. On the on-premise, because teams are usually behind a firewall, they typically have more relaxed permissions because only intranet and only internal users can access that network anyways. But when you're in the cloud, you're open to the whole wide world. And so carrying those bad habits can have some detrimental impact. So make sure that prior to doing this migration, you're doing a lot of that cleanup. Now, those are the biggest tips that I can give you. If you do those things, the next steps are going to be a lot easier. But as we look back here through this, basically the process here, Atlassian is giving you some information. So if you click on this, this will actually tell you a lot of the information that you need to have. Now, this is basically very straightforward. Again, I've done a couple of these where it's not trip. I mean, it's not really hard. As long as you check your check boxes here, right? You check your permissions, you understand the, the source and the destination, right? You, you add those plugins, you install them, right? You want to make sure that you're following these instructions. Because Atlassian does basically have, they've thought of everything at this point. We're, we are pretty far into this whole migration strategy that Atlassian wants everybody off of on premise and into the cloud. And so this is pretty well defined. So make sure you read through all that documentation. This is basically going to give you a review of all your apps so that you make sure that you have that list because sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And a lot of times are like, well, I don't know which plugins I don't have. So make sure you look at that. Next up is you're going to go to your dashboard. So this is where you're actually going to create your migration. And so when I click my migration here, this is where you're going to select your destination site. Again, if you're not an org admin in the destination, it won't work. Then you'll choose what projects you want to migrate. It'll automatically check for some conflicts. You'll review them and you either have to fix them then, or you don't do the migration. And that's pretty much it. So this check for conflicts is basically going to give you a list of the blockers. And the common things are those project settings where the projects don't have the right permissions. The other problem that I've seen very common is that you don't have the plugins that you're like, ah, eh, I don't need it. Well, Atlassian is going to do the check. And if they don't like it, if they don't like the check, then it's going to fail you and you're not going to be able to do the migration. 
So make sure that you at least try this out even before you're ready because Atlassian is actually going to tell you where your gaps are so that then you can go create a battle plan and fix your problem. But as long as you do this correctly, as long as you basically follow their guides here, because they are going to tell you, they're going to help you. Well, not at last and directly, but their, their user interface is going to tell you where your problems are. As long as you do that and you follow those steps, you should have some smooth sailing. The migration though, what I'll tell you is kind of, because it's still in a beta, sometimes it's a little rocky. Again, I've done about six or seven migrations. Most of the time I can migrate like 90% of everything in one shot. And every migration is going to be a little bit different. The duration is going to be a little bit different, but fortunately Jira and Confluence will actually tell you how long it's going to take for each space to migrate. And based on how many projects you choose to migrate, it'll also tell you if it's going to take an hour, two hours, 10 hours, whatever for the whole thing to move. So. And last thing does give you a lot of meta information, which again, I recommend probably my biggest tip is even if you're, if you're just in step zero, come here, come to your work, come to the dashboard, come to the system, to the migration beta, click on the migration dashboard, create a migration, follow these steps. And then Jira is going to give you all this metadata. It's going to tell you how long you should expect based on the file size based on the number of users that you got to port over. It's going to tell you where your gaps are with respect to the plugins missing, the permissions not being correct. Maybe there's an incompatible project. Oh, one key thing to note, no, this won't be a problem if you're coming from on-premise to cloud, but cloud to cloud, you can't do it on a team managed project. So you will maybe have to first convert your team managed to a company managed and then migrate it over. I recommend you do that versus the alternative, which is to export and then re-import because exporting and importing is just a pain in the butt that you don't want to deal with. So yeah, just make sure you're following these steps. Make sure you're going through everything here. And for the most part, again, Atlassian makes this really, really clear. I've only had to redo this like once or twice where something just didn't go according to plan. There was like a hiccup in the system. All I did was queue up that same project again, hit the migration again, and basically made a, a, like a test migration too or whatever and then went through the process again, and then it went okay. So I haven't had an experience where I'm like completely blocked. I haven't had an experience where I had to like pull back and like not, not do the migration at all. And then my final tip that I'll leave you with is before you do any of this, before you embark in this journey, back up your site. <laughs> make sure you are backing up the cloud or make sure you're backing up your on-premise because you never know if you have to revert back. So just make sure you're backed up and you should be fine. Anyways, hopefully these tips helped you out. I know I didn't actually get to show you the migration because I don't have a migration to do. Those are usually covered under NDAs anyway, so I wouldn't be able to show you any of that stuff. But the migration is something that a lot of teams are starting to use. And again, I just wanted to give you the tips because I've done a few of these and there's a couple of roadblocks that if you just know what's coming up ahead, it makes your life a whole lot easier. If you found value of this video, make sure you drop a like. And if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, make sure you smash that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.